Welcome everybody to the NFTI for Biodiversity Tools and Services webinar. In this webinar series, we will dive into the functionalities, applications, and the benefits of the NFTI for Biodiversity Tools and Services. And the webinar is hosted by the German Federation for Biological Data, and it's divided into two parts. It will take up to an hour, about an hour. So in the first part, we will have a short demonstration or presentation of one of the services of NFDI for biodiversity. That part will be recorded and published on YouTube later on. And in the second part, we will have a Q&A session. My name is Daniel Chink, and I am the training coordinator in the project NFDI for biodiversity. And I'm working at the German Federation for Biological Data that is located in Bremen and I will moderate today's session. And now I'm glad to announce Nawal Karam. She's a principal investigator at the Institute for Applied Informatics at the University of Leipzig, where she managed several successful research and industrial projects. She obtained her PhD in the field of semantic information retrieval from the University of Clermont-Ferrand in France. And her expertise covers topics around knowledge representation and artificial intelligence with a background in semantic web technologies and machine learning. And for several years, she developed the GF Bio Terminology Service, which is an ontology repository. And now in the context of NFDI for biodiversity, she joined the OntoPortal Alliance where she developed the BioDiv portal. So that's the new version of the terminology service. And she will present that tool today. So, Nawal, the stage yeah. is yours. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you for the nice presentation for the opportunity to present our work. Um, so I will uh, share my screen. Okay, so um, Biodiv Portal, it's a, a terminology repository and service for biodiversity. I prepared the presentation uh, today like with the tree main topics like why do we need terminology services and semantic web in general what are terminologies what terminologies do we have in biodiv portal and i will finish by the how how can we use biodiv portal and what kind of requirements does it cover so starting by the why it is mainly because of the ambiguity of natural language so usually we use different words for expressing the same concepts, which is uh, synonymy. Like, for example, here I am searching for Adonis Blue, this beautiful butterfly. So by using the common name and somebody can search for the same concept, but using the scientific name or also by using a synonym. So basically, those are all synonyms that could be used. And where can we find this kind of information? So fortunately, there was like a lot of work in the domain of taxonomy. So since decades, taxonomists are developing different kinds of taxonomies for different kinds of species or plants or whatever. So an example here for with the NCBI taxonomy, where we can find this information, for example, about the synonymy. So we have the synonym, we have the common name, Adonis Blue, for this specific concept. So another issue with the ambiguity of natural language is the use of the same word for expressing different concepts, which is polysemy. And we can see it here, for example, if we search for Mercury, then we will get results from the Mercury, the planet, and also Mercury, the element. Such information can be also found in what is called like an ontology, where we have definition about the concept. For instance, here it's an elementary, elementary Mercury of oxidation state zero with additional information, for example, about its biological role as a neurotoxin, 
So all this information can be basically connected and used for to to improve uh, search and uh, uh, data integration. So what do we want? We would like, instead of having keywords, we would like to talk about concepts. So concepts have semantics behind. Like here, for example, if uh, Google have integrated that since, since many years now, where we can search for a concept and you can see here, for example, that this one is an insect, this one is a plant, etc. Additional information can be also retrieved like, for example, here for the honeybee, where we can see the lifespan of this species and so on. Also additional lower classification, so another term of this one, and, and some, some more information about the class, the family order, and so on. So all this information is like adding meaning, what we, we also call semantics, and it can be expressed using knowledge representation. And knowledge representation, which is basically terminologies or ontologies. So what do we mean with terminology? So if we uh, go um, from very informal to very formal, so from a control vocabulary until an ontology, Basically, a terminology can be a simple list of terms. It can be a glossary, which is a list of terms with additional informal definition. An example of this one is the GFBio basis of record terminology, which contains information about the record types. The next possible type of terminology is a taxonomy, which is a list of terms that is organized into a hierarchy. An example would be this IOC bird list that is organized into a taxonomy from the AMOD project. Then we have Tesoros, which is a controlled vocabulary that is connected via some types of relations, like for example, Naroa border relations, related term or synonymy. An example of this one would be Eurovac, where we can see, for example, that biodiversity has a broader term biosphere and is related to animal resource, plant resource, and protected species. And the final one is an ontology, which is the most formal one, which represents a set of concepts and relation between them using logical axioms. An example of that is the chemical uh, ontology, JP, which, for example, represents uh, mercury as be having, for example, role some neurotoxin. So, like uh, complex descriptions of this concept. Let's see what kind of terminologies are interesting, for example, for semantic search. So, in a former work, we uh, looked at what biodiversity scholars search for. So, we collected a set of questions, for example, do, do, do butterfly occur? In calcareous uh, grassland, how does agriculture affect the groundwater composition and so on? And then we extracted concepts from, from those questions and we grouped them into higher level entities. So basically, we can search for organism, we can search for concepts about environment, processes, methods, locations, quality and phenotype, anatomical entity, and material and substance. And then we 
we had a look what kind of terminologies exist to cover each type of entities and for example here taxonomies for describing organisms the environment the ontology covers much of the of the ones here environment process method and also a little bit of material and substance JB is for the uh, substance part and so on Jones for locations so we included all those terminologies into the by default. Another important part is for data interoperability. And for that, I have an example from work from our colleagues that worked on a trade data standard. And this is an example of a data set from trade data. And what we need here is to enable like structural interoperability first. So for that, we could use the developed ecological trade standards, which is also available as an ontology in BioDiv portal. And then we could have the interoperability of the content of this ta uh, table. For instance, here we have species names that could come from ITIS. Then we have trait names that could be from the ontology for biological attributes, for example, units from QUDT and basis of record from the GFBio record basis uh, ontology. So, why do we need terminology service? Terminology service is a repository to store, search, browse, and visualize terminologies. We wanted to provide a single access point, which is an API to heterogeneous terminological resources. So all the types of terminologies we've already seen, and also additional ones that could be also available in a tabular format. Then terminology service should offer efficient semantic annotation for text and tabular data. It should offer an environment for the development, creation, and publication of project terminologies. Um, it should automatically generate and store mappings between terminologies provide terminology versioning and evolution mechanisms, and also uh, offer community uh, feedback mechanisms. So those are the most important requirements we collected. And I will tell you also about a little bit of history because as we mentioned already, it started already 10 years ago with the GFBio project the German Federation for Biological Data, and we developed our own solution, which was called the GF Bioterminology Service, and it was it is running since 2015. And then the NFDI for Biodiversity project started in 2020, and since a year after we joined the Onto Portal Alliance. So the Onto Portal Alliance is an alliance consortium of different actors from different institutions, including BioPortal, which is basically the historical code. OntoPortal is based on BioPortal from Stanford. And so we, each partner is running their own instance of, of the Antor portal code, and we are all collaborating on the development of this code. So, what we had in the Jeff Bioterminology service, we, we had like ontologies that were stored locally, but also ontologies that we accessed via their APIs. So, for example, the ETIS or 
the DTN taxon list from SNSB. So the the idea like to be able to load them also in BioDiff portal, we need to transform the dumps into a semantic web format like our. So that's what we started to do. And we loaded everything in the brand new BioDiff portal. So how can we use a BioDiff portal? So a user can basically browse, search for terminologies that can be interesting for research. Developers can also access programmatically the API. So to provide semantically enriched applications. Then also developers or users could retrieve and store terminologies in their own local systems. And finally, they can contribute with their own terminologies so that they can get access to all the provided services automatically. So how to browse? So you need to go to the browse tab and then you will get like the list of all available terminologies. One can sort by name, by date, and so on. You can search for a terminology and you can also use the fasted search like to, to choose, for example, terminologies by category, by date, and so on, by type, etc. Another interesting service that can be used is the recommender service which which is you can look at what terminologies could be interesting for your own data so you can paste like a, te a text here and get recommendations for example here i i did paste the, the species names that were in the table, and then I get the annotations from the ETS taxonomy. So I will demo this a little bit later. Then you can contribute with your own terminology to the BioDiff portal. So, and then get access to the provided services. And for that, it's again, the browse tab and submit a new ontology. For that, you need to be logged in. So you can create your own account and, and log in to load ontologies, either in public or private mode. And then put all the information, like there is some required metadata information that needs to be filled in. So then you can also browse the content of the BioDiff portal and store, like download the ontologies to your system. And this can be done by going here to the submissions part in the page of, of one of the terminologies, for example, here, the PATO ontology, and you can download any version in different formats, any of the submitted versions. And you can also see the what happened between versions. If there are new versions that come, we will also provide a difference that says what happened between the versions. So, Finally, we provide as well an API to access all the services that, that we provide. And you can see here, if you go to data portal gfbio.org, you will get the list of services that are available and the documentation is also linked here. So 
an example of an integration of this API by one of our partners, uh, give B, uh, BV. Then they basically integrated this in their interface, Nani web interface, uh, where they offer a drop down with a search. So you can uh, search for terms that come from BioDiff portal and you can also check the hierarchy, for example, or additional information about uh, the concept. And you can also, they also developed a possibility to browse through the hierarchy of the terminology. For instance, here uh, it's it is, and you can as well display information about each concept. So yeah, basically that's it for the slides. So I could show you a live demo right now. So yeah, this is the, when uh, you go the, the landing page of BioDev portal, you can see that you can directly either search for, a, for an ontology or for a class. For example, I can search for QDT, the quantity and units ontology, or the ABCD ontology, and so on. So I prepared also here the tabs. So if we go to the ABCD ontology page, you can see all the detailed information about this ontology. So this is the metadata information about the format, the contact person who created it. For instance, here, the Tedwick ABCD task group, when this one was released, and so on. Then you can get information about the matrix, the content of the ontology, like how many classes, how many individuals, how many properties have been defined, and so on. You can download the ontology, and you can see also, we have also a fairness score tab where we evaluate automatically the fairness of the ontology itself. Then if you go to the classes, tab, you can see the hierarchy and also you can have like a date view where you can see the when the concepts have been created. So if there is a new version, you will see the new date here like with the new concept that have been created. So and then there is the properties tab with all the defined properties, the notes, if there are some. For now, there are no notes, but you can add comments or add proposals to any of the terminologies that are on the on the portal or subscribe to, to the notes email. So to, to be able to add proposals or add comments, you, you again need to be logged in which I mentioned also earlier, you can just create a, an account and you can be, you can add notes or add uh, terminologies or work on and get also the a key for the API. So then uh, we have the uh, mappings tab where we show the mappings to other terminologies on the, the portal. For instance, you can see that ABCD is mapped to schema.org vocabulary and we can see what kind of concepts have been are, are included in both like the data set for example country image object and so on then uh, there is the instance tab so the like 
the instance that have been included in the terminology, like for example, Fahrenheit, which is of type temperature scale or fossil specimen that is a record basis and so on. So the way there is also the possibility to to get the code for widgets where you can type, you can include to your own system, but, but we are working on improving the code of this, of those widgets right now. Okay. Then I wanted to show also the ontology recommender. For instance, here I have the the list of of species we we had in the table and also the list of traits that have been measured so we can click on recommendation and we get the ontologies that cover this text so you can see here for example it is is covering the 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 main species names the ontology for biological attributes covers body length, body height, and white, and so on. And here, I you can also say, I want the keywords, which means that it should uh, the the whole the whole con um, text here should be a concept. So then we will get less less results because where we want to cover the whole uh, the whole concept and not part of it like like when when we are using the text input so another interesting service is the annotator so i did copy the the abstract from one of the publications here and you can get annotation for that you can see that all the concepts that exist in some ontology on Biodip portal will be will be annotated here. For example, digestive en enzyme activity from the animal trait ontology, or bacteria from the etis, and so on. You can also here share, take the option match longest only so we will have less less annotations but only the the longest words will be matched or annotated so again you can see for example for fatty acid it won't it won't show the acid concepts for example or only fatty so it it will take the longest the longest concept or the longest keyword. Okay, finally, I wanted to show you the the API. So here are the all the endpoints that can be used, and this is the API documentation with all the endpoints and the the, the details about the parameters and so on. Okay, so I think I'm finished. Thank you for your attention.